All right, let's talk about Trevor Penning. He's a player who, listen, uh, in the past draft, uh, as in in the 2022 draft, the Saints really made an effort to make sure they got both a tackle and a receiver. Chris Olave uh, was great for them in year one. Trevor Penning, however, was banged up and barely played. We only got a small sample size from him, but let's talk about that sample size and what happened during it and maybe what we can learn from it. And there's some good and some bad, I think, with Penning. Let's start off with this play. He's going up one-on-one -on -one against an edge rusher right here. Watch how right when this play begins, I think the, you know, uh, defensive lineman he's going up against is going to try and use power right here. That's what he's going to attempt to do, and the reality is for Penning, it's just not a great idea to try to just win using straight power. Penning is someone who is very physical himself, uh, and, you know, again, uh, sometimes too physical. We all know about the, you know, uh, plenty of personal fouls and things like that that he had in college, but in terms of strength, definitely very good at when he gets the hand placement he wants, being able to hold on. At least that's how he was in college, but how did it work at the NFL level? Well, as you see, very good. I mean, again, the ball came out uh, just a little bit after, but still felt like just the way that play was going, he would have had several more seconds to make that, uh, to hold on to that block right there. So for Penning, yeah, I do think that he definitely showed what kind of we knew he could be good at. I think he was pretty good at. Like also stuff like this in the running game, it was another very good example where it's again going to be a one-on-one -on -one block in the running game uh, and, you know, watch what happens. Right when this play begins, you see really what's going to be notable here is where his right hand is. So as of right now, I think he did a relatively pretty good job of getting the hand placement he wants, which again... His biggest knock coming out of college was his, uh, you know, he's a bit raw. So the fact that the technique was pretty sound, uh, I thought, uh, in the NFL is a, definitely a good sign. But anyway, he has that right arm kind of on the, you know, near the left shoulder pad area. And that's where he's going to really use his power from. He's going to try to push off to the side using that right hand and watch what he's able to do. Watch how he does really just, you know, completely get him out of the way. Again, the run was nowhere close there. There was a, a little bit of pushing and shoving uh, after the play. Once they went off screen, there was no really no more uh, pushing and shoving. I saw the other angle. Uh, I would show you if there was more, uh, but no, that, that was pretty much it. But, you know, uh, really good stuff from Penning, I thought, uh, to be able to make sure that he can, again, pull off that block, and using the things he's good at, which is his power, which he did there. And also stuff like this, where again, uh, you know, uh, has a very long reach, it is able to use those uh, those arms, I think, very well in terms of allowing players to uh, not get too close to the inside, not be, be able to get past him. And here's a good example of him using doing exactly that. Watch how right when his play begins. What's really fascinating about this play, you know, for a left tackle, usually the hand placement that makes the most that has the most value the hand that you have to pay the most attention to is going to be your left hand left hand for a left tackle right hand for a right tackle uh because you know oftentimes the edge rusher is going to try to get to the outside get around you and so because of that the left hand tends to be the most important one but what's really fascinating about penning is it feels like his almost his best asset is his right hand here even though he's playing left tackle you see how he does a really good job and he consistently does a good job of getting that right hand out and getting it to where he wants it to be it's not exactly right on the shoulder pad right now but it is about to be and you can see why it's just giving the edge rusher trouble again watch how he then finally does you know get it on and really shoves the ta uh, edge rusher out of the way to where the edge rusher was just not going to be able to get in position to even try and get to the left arm like he never even got there because the right hand pushed him out of the way which is just very fascinating so again at the end of the day, just find a way to block the other guy. It doesn't matter how you do it. If you're blocking someone, you're blocking someone, and that's what Penning was able to do on that play. Now, going over to some negatives, there were some negatives. There were. This is an example where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one block on this play, and the thing about Penning, again, like we said, bit raw, and maybe not the best with like footwork and things of that nature maybe not the quickest player very strong you know big physical all that stuff is good but the uh you know the, the quickness is some maybe an area where he could improve upon and this is going to be an example of it so you see, right when this play begins, the edge rusher is going to start off as though he's, uh, you know, uh, not really giving away what he's going to do, but he is going to actually cut towards the uh, left side of the screen. So, so towards the guard uh, is where he's going to be going right there. There's some space for him to get through. And, you know, inside moves are definitely a bit risky. Because, obviously, you're giving up containment, meaning that the quarterback can get to the outside, which, you know, depending on the quarterback, you have to be very careful when you do that. If it's Lamar, you can basically never do that. If it's Andy Dalton, like it is now, okay, that gives you a bit more freedom to try something like this for sure. But, again, 
Andy Dalton still is capable of getting outside the pocket. So if Penning can get a hand on him and push him towards the middle of the field, this could be a very good situation for New Orleans. However, Penning really doesn't touch him at all. Uh, the pressure comes, quick throw, so it wasn't a sack, but still was incomplete. Those are the kind of things that Penning does really need to work on. Uh, is you know, He just needs to get, I think, more reps and sort of see what he's going up against a little bit more. I'm not sure exactly how Penning can get better in this area and what he can do, but this is definitely a weakness in his game that you would like to see get you know improve a bit. It was one of the few weaknesses we saw from him in college, so definitely something you want to see him you know do a little better. And we'll see if you know again, it was a good move getting beat by a good move. There's worse things to do than that. However, at the same time, I certainly would say he did get beat on that play, in my opinion. But let's go to one more play. Let's talk. You know, let's let's end it on a high note. Why don't we? And, and well, I guess. A high note and a down note. This is a, a question, I guess I should say, by uh, you know for Penning, where what's going to happen is it's once again going to be a one-on-one -on -one block, and watch what happens. Watch how right when this play begins, you see that, again, using that right hand, getting that right hand on the placement that he wants, and here's a potential concern I have with Penning, uh, although also why maybe you shouldn't be concerned about it. It's just a question, and I don't know the answer to it. So if Penning does kind of rely on that right hand a lot, uh, instead of relying on the left hand, like most left tackles do, then there's the issue of what if you get to a situation like this where the edge rusher can now knock that left hand out of the way easier and potentially get to that side and be able to get to the outside and get a pressure that way. That That's just a question I think you have to ask in this scenario. But on this play, it wasn't really able to happen. Penning was able to, again, eventually pressure kind of got there, but I think Penning would have been able to push him behind the quarterback even if Andy Dalton held on held on to the ball a little bit longer. So for me, I think it's one of those things where, yes, I could see some problems arising with this. For sure I could. But at the same time, if they haven't already started, then why would I get too concerned about it right now, I guess, is the question. So as it stands right now, I don't think it would be fair to be overly concerned about something like this. And I think it's fair to say that, for the most part, in the very limited sample size we saw of Penning, I thought he played pretty well. Again, very limited sample size. No one's going to argue with that. But at the same time, I do think that there were some positives for sure uh, with Penning. So, you know, for me, I think that this was a, uh, you know, a good start, but we just need to see more playing time. And next year, hopefully we will see more playing time. And then we can really, I think, evaluate him a little bit more fairly, in my opinion. But at least that's kind of the way that I look at all of this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Trevor Penning? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always... Thanks for watching.